Come on, let, let's get out of here. Oh, sir, just one thing. If we should happen to tread on a mine, what do we do? <laughs> well, normal procedure, Lieutenant, is to jump 200 feet into the air <laughs> and scatter yourself over a wide area. Hello, lovelies. Um, reluctant video powers activate. Today, we're going to dive into a challenging subject, the intersection of anti-Semitism, Zionism, anti-capitalism, uh, the war in Gaza, the terrorist attacks that preceded it, and the recent controversy involving Gen Con. It's a lot, and every time I even lightly brush up against any of these issues, people lose their fucking minds. And it's a lot, but these are important issues, and they deserve our attention, and some slightly more dispassionate and measured commentary, dare I say. So let's unpack this a little bit together, but bear in mind that to do any of these sub-subjects justice would take an hour-long series on each one. First, let's acknowledge why this is such a difficult subject. Uh, these topics are profoundly emotional to many people and personal to many more. There's a lot of confusion and overlap and misuse of language and terminology in the terms that we use. And misunderstandings and strong feelings often lead to very heated debates or shouting matches. Um, and unfortunately, a great deal of hate between a great number of people. Throw some religion into that mix. Um, and that causes things to get even worse as people short circuit their brains with faith and can't be reached with reason. And that happens, albeit to a slightly lesser extent, with ideology as well. And this is just where all of these things cross with each other. So let's start with some definitions and common confusions that occur. Terms like Zionism, anti-Semitism and apartheid get thrown around a lot, often without a clear understanding of what any of them mean. Uh, apartheid is a reference to the racial segregation in South Africa, is that what's occurring uh, in Israel? That's open to debate and discussion, but it's a bit misleading to invoke the ghost of South African apartheid uh, when it does come to Israel. Uh, there must be better ways, more accurate ways of putting it. Uh, Zionism, for example, uh, is the movement for the establishment and support of a Jewish state in what is now Israel. Um, that's really all it means but it seems to carry a connotation of something more extreme of more extreme nationalism uh, somehow um, and to be backing for many of these other aspects such as the alleged Arab apartheid taking place there um, I don't think you have to support every policy uh, or every transgression of the Israeli state to think that Israel perhaps has a right to exist in some form. I, I don't think the two necessarily go together at all, so Zionism is better viewed purely as the movement for the establishment and support of a Jewish state in Israel. Anti-Semitism is a specific form of racism. It's prejudice against or hatred of Jews. And people will try to confuse that in a lot of different ways. I mean, Semitic doesn't just mean Jews, but anti-Semitism particularly points to Jews. Um, and there are problems with people invoking anti-Semitism where it's inappropriate. So that's where it gets messy. Some people use anti-Zionism or criticism of Israel, the country, as a cover for their prejudice, their racism, their anti-Semitism, and they equate the policies of the Israeli government 
to all Jewish people, seemingly no matter how many Jews speak out against excessive actions or policies they don't like or, or whatever else. Conversely, accusations of anti-Semitism are sometimes used to shield Israel or Zionists from legitimate criticism of their actions, such as their treatment of Palestinians and Israeli Arabs. It's the same way that some women will invoke misogyny if you criticise them for anything, even if they done actually fucked up, or other race baiters, hustlers and so on will just uh, accuse you of prejudice of any other kind when you criticise them for something that they've done. It's a, it's a common problem. Here it happens both ways on both sides. Uh, genuine anti-Semites take cover in criticism of Israel and Israel invokes anti-Semitism whenever it's criticised. It's a particularly tangled web on the political left where critiques of capitalism share certain stereotypes and criticisms with anti-Semitism and the two can often become confused. And so anti-capitalists can be accused of being anti-Semitic when they're not, but equally you find a lot of anti-Semites hiding in amongst anti-capitalists. It's a head fuck. And then there's the issue of how Jews are racialized. Depending on the context, Jews can be seen either as white or non-white, uh, which critics manipulate to fit their particular narratives, often changing their assessment of what Jews are from moment to moment. It's a complicated identity that can't be neatly boxed. It crosses religion and ethnicity and, and more. I mean, the quantum wave collapses once the Jew is observed into being either white or non-white, depending on who is commenting and what particular interpretation serves them best in that moment, which to anyone who likes the idea of there being an actual reality and uh, meaning to things is incredibly aggravating. So why bring all this up now, when there's been plenty of opportunity to bring it up uh, in the recent past? Uh, I get people who contact me with stories quite often. Amongst those recently was the mention of the Crit Awards at Gen Con, which has brought all of this up for reasons which will become apparent. And I probably should have commented on it before, but uh, I ain't been well, and I've got a lot of regular work on, so I just uh, couldn't find the time, and the fact that it's a third rail subject didn't particularly help. Um, so the Crit Awards is uh, a, a Johnny-come-lately kind of awards thing, giving out awards to role players and companies and people from streamed shows and... Shit like that. And they were going to host their award ceremony at Gen Con. Um, their awards contradicted themselves by saying, you know, hatred and prejudice and so on wasn't welcome. And then a few short points later, taking an explicitly anti Zionist and arguably anti Semitic stance, um, a furore blew up around this. Um, seemingly, they got censored out of it via threats from sponsors, whether of Gen Con or them in particular, not clear. And there are a lot of controversy, averse controlling interests involved in Gen Con and hotels and everything else that you need to wrangle to get a convention to work. Is censorship the best option here, the best approach? My immediate instinct, as ever, is to say no. Uh, but equally, we can't really have a double standard here where some forms of racism are banned and other forms of racism aren't. Frankly, I'm surprised uh, that the banhammer, in whatever form, came down on them, but it's probably the right call. Out-and-out -out racists probably shouldn't be welcome, uh, and one would expect white supremacists to be prohibited or for genuinely racist games and products to be disallowed. However, we have in the past seen plenty of racist people and bits of material from the Bledsoe's neoconservative, uh, sorry, neo-confederate beliefs to the explicitly racist content of Coyote and Crow or Swordsfall in the community. 
So there already is a double standard. Um, there are acceptable targets. There is acceptable prejudice. There is acceptable racism. But maybe this is a step towards doing away with that. One can hope. Anyway, the awards, uh, the awards were eventually withdrawn or banned, not sure which, after significant pushback. Still, it doesn't seem like the people responsible for the Crit Awards accept or understand their hypocrisy or why this happened, so it'll probably just end up hardening their anti-Semitism and that of certain others who were looking forward to the awards. Um, people with the luxury of having absolute conviction that they are right. So this incident also raises questions about why certain prejudices, like anti-white racism, often pass without comment while others don't, or you know, anti-male sexism. It's a reminder that our responses to prejudice can be inconsistent, politically charged, biased, or driven by convenience and acceptability rather than principle. I'm going to adopt the controversial, apparently, position uh, that prejudice and racism is bad, uh, regardless who it is from and who it is to. On a more personal note, I experience, weirdly, a significant amount of anti-Semitic abuse in my comments, despite not being Jewish in any sense. I get comments about my appearance, accusations of being a Soros shill, a race traitor, a half-breed, and all the usual nonsense that gets directed at anyone critical of the far right and their nonsensical positions. Since the recent, well, not that recent anymore, I suppose, uh, since the most recent terrorist attacks on Israel and the subsequent revenge attacks on Gaza, the amount and viciousness of anti-Semitic rhetoric has surged and it's now coming from both tips of the horseshoe. It is disturbing, uh, especially to see it in the somewhat reasonable and measured community I seem to have fostered here. And it's disturbing and it highlights the broader trend of rising anti-Semitism worldwide, and more worryingly than the rise of anti-Semitism itself, the rise in the acceptability of said anti-Semitism and the boldness with which people are expressing it. To put this in historical context, the Jewish people have a long history of persecution, pogroms and expulsion, culminating in the Holocaust during World War II and extending after that in the Middle East, after you know, in the immediate aftermath of the establishment of Israel. To this day, they are surrounded by and intermingled with explicitly genocidal extremists and states who want to eradicate Israel and the Jewish people. I mean, never again really means something to the Jewish people. And in that context, their actions, their reactions are at least comprehensible, even if they're not necessarily forgivable, nor with due consideration, probably the best long-term option to solve or lessen these issues. Most of all, a secure Jewish homeland is important as a refuge and a place to be safe against any future pogroms or holocausts. Understanding this history is crucial to grasping the modern debates around Zionism and anti-Semitism, and it's why the issues around Israel and their neighbours seem so completely insoluble. In summary, then, um, these issues are deeply intertwined and often misrepresented. People use language to cover their prejudice or to cover their poor actions. This controversy at Gen Con over the Crit Awards is just one example in our little corner of the world. An example of how these debates play out in more consequential areas in real life, uh, affecting communities and individuals in very complex ways. It's important to approach these topics with nuance and compassion, recognising the valid concerns on all sides, the monstrosities committed on all sides. But nobody seems to want to think in that way. I mean, we should stand firmly against hate, whatever form it takes no matter who, like I say, 
doesn't matter who it's from, doesn't matter who it's to, the principle is that hatred over people's immutable characteristics is wrong and cannot be justified. But what do you think? Let's keep this conversation going, trying to become a nuanced, try and learn from each other, and try and strive for a more understanding and genuinely tolerant community, um, not a tyranny of tolerant uh, of tolerance community. Yeah, if we're going to apply these rules to anti-Semitic racism, uh, even in such a contentious context as this, then let us apply them to all forms of hate and prejudice, or conversely, none of them. The problem here, I think, is the double standards. They muddy the waters and they stoke division and hatred probably more than the actual racists ever could. So thanks for watching. If you found this helpful or thoughtful, please like, subscribe, um, share, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to call me a Zionist shill with a big nose and mongoloid physiognomy, uh, you can do that in the comments as well. Because, yeah, engagement is engagement. Zang.